Today I'd like to show you a new native iOS app that I've been working on, which leverages the IBM Watson speech-to-text service for converting spoken language into text, the IBM Watson QA service for natural language processing, so searching based on that text, and also the advanced mobile access service, which gives us operational analytics and remote logging inside of a native mobile app, which essentially recreates a Siri-like experience on the iPhone. So I'm gonna launch the app now, I call it Ask Dr. Watson. So let me show you it in action here. We'll tap on the microphone and ask a question. What are the symptoms of a heart attack? It will now query the Watson services. We see that it recognizes what are the symptoms of a heart attack and it returns the search results to us. And then I can have the phone. All heart attacks begin with the sudden crushing chest pain that often is shown on TV or in the movies. In one study, for I can have the phone speak back that text to me, and that's using the text-to-speech API that's local on the phone, but speech-to-text is actually being implemented using the Watson service on Bluemix. Let me go ahead and ask it another question. What are the symptoms of Parkinson's disease? And we've got several search results that come back. And let me do one more example. What are the risks of smoking? Now let's go ahead and take a look at the different components of the system and then see kind of how it all works together. If I jump over here to the browser, you can see I've got my application dashboard up on Bluemix. And if I scroll down, we can see the different components that are being used. First of all, we have our SDK for Node.js, and this is being used to develop kind of a, a middleware that's, that's taking the input from the mobile phone and then delegating to the different services. I base this upon the iOS 8 application boilerplate, which includes the SDK for Node.js, advanced mobile access, cloud and NoSQL database, and uh, push iOS 8 service. The cloud and NoSQL database is a NoSQL database that you can use within your mobile applications. The push service is for very easy push notification management for your mobile applications. I'm not using those in this particular app, um, but I can easily take advantage of them by building on top of the mobile application boilerplate. In addition to the mobile services, we have the Watson question and answer service and the Watson speech to text service. The speech to text service is what's converting that spoken language into text that we can act upon. And then the question and answer service is actually taking that natural language text and then performing a query using that against um, the existing healthcare data corpus. Before we go any further, I also want to show what advanced mobile access gives us for our mobile applications. So I'll click on advanced mobile access. And in here, you can see I've got my application configured um, version 1.0. I'm not using any kind of authentication. It does provide um, user authentication for you but what I wanna show is the monitoring features. The advanced mobile access service gives us operational analytics so we can see at any point in time a snapshot of essentially the health of the application. We can see um, right here on the overview, the active devices. We can see all of the URL requests that are being made by the application. And I can dig into further detail on those. So if I wanted to see usage and I can see, um, this is grouped by week, but if I go by day, if I wanna see what days was their peak usage of the application in terms of application views. Um, you can see how many new users. Obviously, um, it's just been me using this. I can come in and look at network requests so we can see, oh, hey, look, on a particular day, they were taking a really long time. There must have been a problem. We can use this along with the logs to figure out, was there an issue? Is there something that we need to look at? I can also come in and see what was the total number of requests for a time period, what was the peak usage, um, I can actually break that down to week, month, day, or hour. I can also come in and I can see active devices. I can come in and see new devices. I can also come in and see device logs. So in here, I could see if there was an error, if there was a crash. I could also just change my log level. And, and as a developer, I can add debug or informational messages to my app that's running on the client. And as it's running on the client, I can collect these messages on the server and use these for troubleshooting or debugging issues or optimizing performance down the road. Let's now jump over and go into a little bit more detail about how this service works. 
So the mobile application, as soon as it starts, it's connecting to the advanced mobile access service. This is what gives us the operational analytics and, and the log capture, essentially with very, very minimal com configuration. Then when we want to ask a query to the server, um, the iOS app is capturing audio from the device. It's sending that to Node.js. Node.js is then delegating to Watson speech to text service and converting that into a text transcript. And then that transcript is being used to query the Watson QA service. And this gives us the ability to speak to our phone. That gets handled through the entire process and gives us a search result at the end based upon the words that we've spoken. Now let's jump into the code very, very quickly at a high level. And I'm going to look at app.js. In here, I have two methods that are really important. I have the transcribe method and I have the ask method. The transcribe method is actually what's taking the audio input from the mobile device and turning that into a transcription, so text. The ask method is what's being used to perform the Q&A service where it's taking that text and turning that into a search result. When we capture audio from the mobile phone, that's being saved as a WAV file and that gets sent as an HTTP POST attachment to the transcribe service that we have right here. Using the Watson API for Node, we can just use the speech text service and call the recognize method, and we're going to pass in our search parameters. And if we jump back up here, you can see here's our parameters. Um, the audio parameter is a read stream. The read stream is based on the file that is part of this request. So if we look request.files.audio, that corresponds with the audio file that's being sent as part of the HTTP post. And it's very, very simple to use the Watson speech to text service. We're just using speech to text.recognize. We're sending in a reference to the read stream, and we're saying, what's the content type? So we know it's an audio, it's using the L16 codec, and it's a 1600 kilohertz mono audio file. And once the Watson speech to text service has transcribed this into text, we're just closing that read stream, so we're closing the access to the file. And we're going to take that result and filter it because it might give you multiple results based upon what was being said. We're going to take the final result and we're going to send that back as a JSON response to this post request. If I scroll down a little bit more, we can look at our ask query handler. And in this case, the app makes an HTTP GET request to the server with the query parameter containing the text that we want to perform the query upon. So here I'm setting a variable called query and I'm getting that query parameter. And then I'm calling the Watson question answer healthcare service and just calling the ask method. And I'm passing in the text that we want to use for the search. The Watson API will perform the search and give us a response. And if there are answers that are returned, what's happening here is I'm looping over and I'm only sending back to the mobile device um, the text and the value, and the value is actually a confidence level. So how accurate does Watson actually think this response is? So I'm slimming down the response from Watson, uh, putting that into an array, and sending that as a JSON object that is a response to the get request. Now if we jump over to Xcode, and in this case we're using the AV Audio Session API, which is a native API for iOS apps. And I'm setting up our record settings. So I'm saying we want the audio format as linear, P linear PCM. We're setting our rate. We're setting it to one channel, 16-bit uh, audio. And there's a couple uh, additional parameters that are being set. And then I'm setting a path to where we actually want to save the audio file to. And then we're going to initialize an AV audio recorder using that path. And then we will prepare to record and start recording. The operating system will first ask the user for permission to access the microphone. And once you hit OK, it starts recording. Now, when we stop recording, and this can happen either if you tap the microphone button or uh, after a period of silence, um, stop recording will be invoked. And it's, we're just going to call audio recorder stop. We're going to set the audio session as inactive. And then we're going to post this to the servers. So let me jump down to our post to server method. And here we're doing a few things. First of all, we're using the IMF resource request class to, to handle the post requests that we're sending to the server. By using the IMF resource request class, 
we're able to capture those operational analytics and display them in the monitoring section of the advanced mobile access component. And what happens here, I'll just jump through this very quickly, is um, in this section, we're assembling a multi-part form post that we're sending to the server, and we're adding an attachment. And that attachment, you can see right here, we're saying it's audio, and then we're appending the data. We're, we're, we are appending the audio file to the network request. And if I scroll down just a little bit more, right here, we can see that we're um, on a request calling send with completion handler. So we're making the request to the server. And once we get the response back to the server, we're going to check that and see, did we get a transcript, transcript result? And once we receive the response, we're going to do some error checking and we're going to access um, the transcript. And we're going to see, was there a result string? And if there was a result, on the client side, we're going to call request QA to make a request to the server. And then we're going to update the UI. So we're actually going to display our result string on the UI while it's performing the request to the Watson QA service. If we look at our request QA method that we have here locally, it's also using IMF resource request, and it's going to call that ask service. And that's going to call node, which is going to perform the query on the Watson QA service. And then that's going to return our response. And then if we look down here where I'm updating the UI, if there were search results, then we're going to display the search result view. Very straightforward. We're not doing anything pretty crazy here. And that gives us the entire round trip interaction. So we're going from spoken language, we're sending it to the server as a WAV file, we're getting a transcript back, we're, then we're making a query to the Watson QA service and returning search results that were gathered from the natural language processing capabilities from Watson. If you like to test this out on your own, all of the source code for both the client and server is available on the IBM Bluenix GitHub account.